Here we are. Here we are. Would you like to talk to us about something that's uncomplicated first? Like, like the palette? Yes. The palette's not uncomplicated. Um, I love really clear color. I love color just straight out of the tube or bottle. I also love to mix and I love to play those together like pure, transparent, just clean color and then muddy, neutral um, color. I play the neutrals against glittery surfaces and pure undiluted color. So musty blues and lavenders and yellow ochres are set against vivid reds and whites and naphthol reds, etc. When you're right here, here's a clean red it's almost just watered down to a spill of translucent color. And then here's an iridescent pearl over it. So the pearl separates and allows, and you can see the pigment gathering at the edges. And then the red shows through. So you have a clean color and a color that is moving on top of that color. But you can still see the color through the top color. So there's a sense of color passing through each other. And then, you know, again, this, this color that I just went crazy over, it's like a, um, it's an alizarin crimson, but it's almost like a plum. And it's in a lot of these paintings. But, but if, if you get the pure version, which is somewhere right in here, and then you get these mixed versions that going towards kind of a the earth tone and then going towards lavender tones though so it's 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 transparent and opaque it's all those things put together and it's color traveling through other color or colors traveling from their pure to their mixed states I'm a night painter. I love painting when the world is winding down and I'm left free to pursue my interests in the studio. I start painting in the early afternoon, build up a head of steam until the early evening and really cook into the night. Depending on the intensity at which I'm working, it can go between 10 p.m. to uh, 1 or 2 a.m., even later. The studio is a mysterious place. You can't always tell how the decisions are made because they're made so intuitively between eye and hand, between action, mark making. What one mark does affects another mark. A line from a poem by Stonehouse says, describes time as a flower in space. So form or space is built of an accumulation of marks made over periods of time. It's as if each mark is its own deposit of time. So that when a painting comes together from all these compressed marks, it's really a universe that speaks to a kind of sensibility 
that's being formed. One of the things that is happening is that the, it's, like, it's like where the children's book where the wild things are, you know? Things just start growing out of other things and suddenly you're in a wild space even when you thought you were in a calm or controllable space. And that's what Florida's like. It's like everything grows so fast. If the plant forms are so beautiful and you've got these beautiful spiky plants like this um, and this, you know, that they offset more domestic kinds of species with wildness and they cut space in an interesting way. And the vines are rich and lustrous and creepy and there's just so much fecundity. There's nature just goes crazy and and that really excites me because it's kind of the wilder side of it's not I mean it's the wilder side of of life that's always there. And always in us too. You know, are we animals or are we formless spiritual beings, I mean, or are we technological robots? I mean, what's it going to be? Or maybe it's all those things, but how do they combine? And I feel that way about painting, you know, how, what's nature in painting, for God's sake? <laughs>